First, about the death of one of the inventors of television comedy, Lucille Ball. Before there was a global village, before the medium was the message, there was Lucy. Week after week, from the 1950s to the reruns, still running worldwide in the 1980s. Lucille Ball died today at 77, a little over a week after heart surgery. Correspondent Jerry Bowen reports on the outpouring of respect and love for an actress who made a nation laugh out loud in the living room. Yes, she did. She died this morning. The news from the hospital was a real shock. Lucille Ball, recovering so well from emergency open-heart surgery just eight days ago, died suddenly early today. Even hospital officials were stunned. She was even beginning to walk a little bit. Now, her spirits were good. Everyone felt very optimistic. There was uh, no reason to suspect that anything was about to occur. It's coming down here on the left-hand side, this is Lucille Ball's house right here. It just passed away this morning. Her family went into seclusion. Friends and flowers began arriving at her Beverly Hills home, and tributes flowed from Hollywood royalty and loyal fans alike to the queen of comedy. She was a friend. We loved her dearly, and she's truly going to be missed. What uh, she did for television is what Chaplin did for silent movies. She inspired women comics. You'd have to be inspired to watch her work and realize that it's possible for a woman to get laughs. So no matter how many tears we cry today, the laughs outnumber them. I love Lucy. Speaking for everybody in the world that grew up with her like I did, well, I'll love her. It was big news from Tokyo to Melbourne, where Lucy stars in reruns. The queen of comedy Lucille Ball died very suddenly. Sad news from Hollywood Boulevard to the Beverly Hills Beauty Parlor. Probably the greatest comedian that ever lived, you know. Lucy's last public appearance was at the Academy Awards, the night the stars shine, and she did. But I've got the most gorgeous girl right by my side, Lucille Ball, right there. It's like the passing of an era, you know. It's like Gleason is gone and now Lucy. But what can you do? The guy knocks on your door and gives you back your pictures, you gotta leave. But there's one thing that's nice. Lucy is gone, but she'll always be with us. I love Lucy. Everybody loves Lucy. Everybody. Jerry Bowen, CBS News, Hollywood. When Lucio Ball came to New York to take acting classes as a 15-year-old, the school wrote her parents to advise they were wasting their money. Was anyone ever more wrong about anything or worse advice given? Correspondent David Browning looks at Lucy's unforgettable career in comedy. All right. Everybody loved Lucy. And it wasn't just the saucer eyes or the laugh that made you laugh, too. No, nope, Lucy's hold on several generations of Americans went way beyond that. Well, I don't think she ever did anything to hurt anyone. I think she was childlike and uh, bemused and uh, <laughs> bewitched, bothered and bewildered. <laughs> And Lucy, Lucy of the pratfalls, Lucy of the sight gags, Lucy of the reruns that go on forever all around the globe. Lucy is so much a part of America's history and its heart, it's hard to remember that even before Lucy, there was Lucille Ball, actress. Even after you grow old. There she is on the left, one of the showgirls with Eddie Cantor in the 1933 movie Roman Scandals. I want to do something with my hands. She arrived in Hollywood via Broadway and arrived, if the truth be known, as a brunette. The red hair came later, an homage to her favorite movie star. I loved Clara Bow. Loved her red hair. I think that's why I had red hair. I wasn't born with this, you know. No? No. Oh. Got the check? Here it is. Her movie roles in the 30s and 40s range from the solid to the purely ornamental, from brunette to blonde to redhead. <laughs> 
And it was in the movies that she first met a young Cuban band leader named Desi Arnaz. Will someone please come? There's a waiter fainted out here. My God! They married, and while Lucy had her own radio show on CBS, Desi went on the road with his band. And then came television. William Paley, the founder of CBS, remembered how I Love Lucy came to be. She came to me one day, and we were going to transfer her from radio to television, and said, I just can't do it. And I said, why not? She said, well, I'm married to Desi Arnaz, and, uh, and the most important thing in the world to me now is to have a baby. It's not going to be possible for me to have a baby if Desi is out traveling around the country leading his band 50 weeks a year or something of that kind. I have to be with him, and if, uh, I, can't, uh, I, if I can't have him with me here in Hollywood uh, participating in my show, I'm just going to travel with him. So I wanted to rest. I said, well, if it's that, that important, we'll find a place for him, and we'll put him into your show. And we uh, started doing it that way. It's me! <laughs> And it was a lucky relationship because the show, as you remember, was a very, very successful one to a very large extent because of uh, Lucia Ball's stubbornness just in wanting to have a baby. Ricky, this is it. This is it. This is it. We didn't know that it would be on for a year even. We knew nothing about time or reruns or anything. found a character that I love doing, and, and I had a chance to do it again and again and again. That's great. Wait for me! But life does not always imitate television. Lucy and Desi divorced in 1960 and went their separate ways, but always spoke with respect of the magic that the other brought to television's most famous show. You know, the one, one good thing about her, she never mind looking messed up or wet or with mud in her face. I mean, you know, most girls are always worrying about their hair. And everything. You know, she never cared. You know, if he was funny and if he was good, too, fine, you know. How do you remember Desi? Fondly. Gratefully. In recent years, Lucille Ball did occasional television roles, serious and comic, and was honored from Hollywood to Washington, and was once asked the epitaph she'd prefer. I ate loved doing what I was doing, so I felt very lucky. I'm happy that I brought laughter because I have been shown by many the value of it. I love Lucy and she loves me. We're as happy as two can be. And that's tonight's CBS Evening News. Later this evening, CBS News will present a primetime one-hour broadcast on the remarkable life of Lucille Ball. That will be at 10, 9 Central Time tonight. Until then, Dan Rather. Lucille Ball, everybody's favorite redhead. Share the fond memories of her legendary life. Lucy, a CBS News special tonight. This is CBS.